Hello friends, in this video tutorial, let us understand what are cursors in TSQL and how to use cursors within store procedures in TSQL. So for this, let us go to SSMS. Now first of all, let us understand what are cursors. So cursors are special type of variables which can hold multiple records in memory at runtime and we can access one row at a time from the cursor variable okay during the execution of the cursor now let us understand the life cycle of the cursor so first of all we need to declare a variable of type cursor with the help of a select statement then we need to open the cursor then we can fetch records one at a time from the cursor then we need to close the cursor and then last step is we need to deallocate the cursor so these are the five steps that we generally follow during the life cycle of a cursor now let us understand what are the different types of cursors so cursors can either be static or dynamic a static cursor is a cursor which does not see the runtime updations of data okay and dynamic cursors are the cursors that see the updations of data happening at runtime okay for the records that it has retrieved now the cursors can be of type local or global Local cursors can be accessed only within the specific batch in which they are created and global cursors can be accessed within the session in which they are created. And the, the next type is scroll or forward only. The scrollable cursors are cursors in which you can fetch records in any direction whereas in forward only cursors you can fetch records only in the forward direction. And the last type is key set cursors. Key set cursors are cursors in which you can have faster retrieval of data that is faster fetch operations with the help of indexes. Now having discussed the types of cursors let us see the practical example of it. So in this case we will declare a cursor variable that is the name is CRS of type cursor which is scrollable, static and global in nature for select star from sys.table so let us see what, what is the data inside uh, our sys.tables that is in db underscore test there are this many tables and all these tables are listed over here so there are nine tables first table is students sec followed by table one and table two and the, the second last table is product and last table is tbl underscore products okay so now for this data set let us create a cursor so let us execute this so now crs cursor has been created let us open the crs cursor let us let us select at the rate at the rate fetch status now at the rate at the rate fetch status is a system defined variable and what does it store it stores zero if there are more rows inside the cursor variable which can be fetched okay and it stores one if there are no more rows inside the cursor variable which can be fetched okay now similarly let us select per at the rate at the rate cursor underscore rows so it shows us that there are nine tables and so it shows that there are nine records which can be fetched from this cursor that we have just defined now now let us fetch different records from this cursor as this particular cursor is a scrollable cursor we will be able to fetch records in any particular direction okay so let us first of all fetch the first record so let is so let us say fetch first from crs so it has fetched the first record which is students okay then fetch last from crs which was tbl underscore products right so tbl underscore products related record has been fetched fetch prior okay so that was products table so now uh, data related to product table has been fetched fetch next from crs which again means the last record which means tbl underscore products right also fetch absolute fifth from the crs this can also be done okay A along with prior and next kind of operations we can also go and fetch absolute uh, a record at absolute position if it is scrollable cursor so let us fetch the fifth record which is nothing but this reservation table then fetch first from crs which is our students record right so let us fetch the first again from crs and it again shows us the students related record so now let us close this we can directly deallocate the cursor also as closing is an optional step but let us follow all the five steps within the life cycle of the cursor and let us 
close this cursor and then let us deallocate this cursor ok so now we have seen one example of cursor which is of type scroll ok that is scrollable cursor now let us see one more example of a cursor which is forward only so this particular cursor we will declare as crs2 type cursor forward only dynamic global for select star from sys dot tables so now the cursor is ready it has been declared let us open the cursor let us fetch next so now again as the data set is same the first record will be students record followed by table 1 so let us fetch the first record which is students table followed by the next record which is for table 1 ok now let us deallocate this particular cursor so the cursor is deallocated and now let us uh, now let us see a exam one example for a stored procedure which uses the cursors ok so let us create the stored procedure ok so let us execute this so now the stored procedure has been ok it already exists so let me just go to stored procedures refresh and let me just remove that stored procedure ok so this is the one so delete ok so now let me again just go and create the stored procedure ok so execute so the stored procedure has been created let us see this is the stored procedure now let us understand what this stored procedure is doing ok so it's uh, create procedure procedure name as begin followed by an end at the end ok and then we'll begin try we'll end try we'll begin catch we'll end catch ok now within begin try and end try what we want to achieve is we want to display the names of these tables nine tables and we want to display the number of records within each of these nine tables that is we want to see display select count star from this each of these nine tables so we declare a variable of type table name and a query ok this is going to be a dynamically executed query so it will it will be of data type n varicar ok so now once we have declared this way this uh, both variables let us declare a cur variable of type cursor globe dynamic global forward only for select name from sys dot tables so this particular cursor will have all this the names of all the tables which belong to this particular database current database ok that is it will have names of these nine rec nine tables ok now we will open the cursor variable we will fetch one table name at a time ok and we will continue till the fetch status is zero that is till the time we are able to fetch next record from this cursor variable then inside this while loop ok what we will do we will begin and end we will form a query which retrieves the table name ok and the number of rows record count for this particular table ok and then we will dynamically execute this particular query ok and then we will fetch the next table name into our address table name variable which will be again used in the next iteration and then we will at the end deallocate after this uh, work is done in the while loop we will deallocate the cursor and then we will write uh, the error handling code in the catch part so we will if there is at all there is an error then we will print the that there is an error during the cursor iterations and we will throw back the error so that the exit error message gets printed on the message window ok so now once this particular stroke procedure has been created now let us just execute this stroke procedure so now uh, note that uh, this particular stroke procedure makes use of the concept of cursors right it is actually uh, declaring a cursor opening a cursor fetching a cursor in in a loop then deallocating the cursor ok so all these steps related to cursors have been followed each part as part of this particular stored procedure so now let us execute this stored procedure and as we can see there will be nine it has executed nine times and each time it has printed the name of the table and the number of records inside the table ok so i hope friends this video tutorial on cursors and how to use cursors within stored procedures is useful to you thank you